So these two newfies are at a bar drinking one night and trying to pick up on the ladies. Doesn't go very well, so closing time, you know, they get back to the... You know what? Scratch all of that. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that was the punchline. Hi, everybody. No, no, no. This is <laughs> Welcome to Carnival Personnel. <laughs> no. We're letting Jacques hang out to dry. See you next week, folks. <laughs> you want to do it? You I do. A- so these two guys from Arkansas are out drinking, trying to pick up women at bars. Doesn't go very well. So, you know, they're like, oh, let's call a night. They go back. And they're just kind of hanging out in their shack, shack, whatever people in Arkansas live in. And then one guy's like, hey, let's play a game. And the other guy's like, oh, yeah, sure, let's play a game. Because I'm going to think of something, and then you have to guess what it is. So his buddy's like, okay, that sounds like fun. So he, you know, so you know I'm not cheating, I'm going to write it down. So, you know, he writes down like moose cock on a napkin. It's just, well, that's Arkansas, they wouldn't have a napkin. He writes moose cock on his hand. And he's like, okay, guess. And his buddy's like... Uh, uh, is it something you can eat? Hmm. I guess. Is it moose cock? <laughs> you want another do-over? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Carnival Personnel. I'm Joe. I'm Shock. And I'm Jim. And and I tried to tell that joke, and I said Newfie, and nobody knows what a Newfie is except, like, you know, people play hockey from Canada. It's, it's, it's their southern jokes. It's like when you make new feet jokes, it's so... Uh, like, yeah. That would have crushed in uh, Saskatchewan. <laughs> hey, well, man, they'd be rolling over right now. Uh, they'd, be, uh, they'd be doing it doggy style. That way they can both watch the game. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe I should open with that one. Anyways, and Jim's here. That's right. Jim! Jim's on the podcast. Ooh, Jim! Jim's sitting right here. Ooh! Carnival personnel won't be the same. Jim! Jim is joining the podcast. Joining, joining, joining the podcast. Who voted for Trump? Jim, he's joining the podcast. Though he should be ashamed, because his podcast is lame. Jim is his name. Jim! Very excited. Two weeks in a row. Is it yeah, two I weeks believe in a row. So. Two or three, I think maybe? We've lost count because he's just now part of the gang. Like Except, I said, I'm committed. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, Happy belated Thanksgiving to everybody. How was your Thanksgiving? Mine was okay. Very modest. Just a couple of people over. Coincidentally, family. Like, it wasn't just <laughs> it's weird the, how that works yeah. out. Yeah. You know, it was all right. Yours? Not a friend's giving? No. Um, no. Uh, we didn't have a friend's marathon, if that's what you're talking no, about. No, no. Like oh. people people who like... Oh, yeah. Like aren't don't family. have family in a town or something that's like that. Oh. celebrated on Wednesday. Can... Is, it, is it not Wednesday night? Friends the, I, I don't know. The Wednesday night thing is like when you go back to your town. Yep. Well, if you had ever left, let's, yeah. let's just say. <laughs> and, and you see your old pals from high school at like the bar and get, you know, stupid drunk before you have to see your family the next day and get stupid drunk. But uh, what about yours? How was your Thanksgiving? How was the Thanksgiving with the. Three? Did we decide it was a three thousand dollar table? Jim, it was. It okay. was. All right. Um, it it was. A, it was thirty one hundred dollars uh, to be exact. So you didn't go over. So you won both showcases. Yeah, yeah there you go. Within a hundred bucks, yeah, right? right? So there you go. Yeah, no, it was great. It was you know turkey stuffing and and all the all the fixings. It was awesome. It was really really great. So my two Thanksgivings, yeah, little 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 brag, humble brag, <laughs> right? To say, um, so my mom always has Thanksgiving and. Uh, one of her sisters was there, her brother, my aunt's three kids, t- my two two of my three cousins, two kids were there. So it was a full, full house. I mean, there was 24, 25 people at my mom's house, which, as again, thank goodness Joe can back me up on this, I maybe rank third, fourth loudest person in, in those <laughs> gatherings. Um, so it was. It was loud. There was food everywhere. It was a lot of fun. So my little guys, you know, my brother's kids are about the same age. So it's really nice. My, I get don't get to see my nieces as much. It was really, really great. Um, my management wasn't able to make the festivities, and she wanted to do just our little family Thanksgiving, which we did today. Sorry, we did yesterday on Saturday because today is Sunday. Today's Monday. This Monday. So, wow. See how the time <laughs> flies when you go into a tofu? Hey, yeah, exactly. I was going to say a lot of tryptophan <laughs> in that tofu. Um, so, we, uh, so and now here's a sad, here's the funny thing. She really wanted to do a big Thanksgiving for just our little family. Me and the boys, the two boys are vegetarian. Uh, her mom and her mom's boyfriend. 
really great guy. You know, I don't know if he's a great guy. He doesn't speak any English. So we watch. <laughs> he could be the son of Sam for all you know. I, I, we thought, we, I've thought about that recently. It's like, we know nothing about this guy. Sorry, that joke didn't land royal. Now, he could be the Zodiac killer for all you know. <laughs> So he, uh, so we did Thanksgiving today. So, so she baked, you know, she had a big turkey for the three of them and, you know, a big tofurkey thing. Seriously, one of those for- tofurkey loaves, you know, for me and the boys, all the trimmings. Of course, the boys don't eat anything ever. Um, so, and her mom's boyfriend didn't want any. So she just had the turkey with her and her mom, while our boys ironically had kimbap, which is a Korean thing. So, <laughs> uh, but it, so the funny thing was, we worked in a soup kitchen on Thanksgiving morning. Like we got the boys up at like six and it was a little guy's idea. I have a seven year old who about two weeks before Thanksgiving. I don't know where he even heard about these things. Um, you know, except you know, maybe when he got in trouble for school for giving the finger and the principal once said, Hey, you're going to wind up eating a soup kitchen someday, you little <laughs> bastard. Uh, which to that I say, yeah, they're probably right. So <laughs> we might as well show. So we went and it was great because he, he actually helped, like really helped. The 10 year old, like his hands hurt from peeling potatoes. It was like a bad, uh, Beetle Bailey comic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where the poor kid and, and he kept like changing like potato peelers thinking the next one might be easier. And I'm like, no, buddy, this really sucks no matter, you know. Right. Yeah, it, don't blame the peeler. <laughs> blame the peeler. But it was. It was a good it was a good family, you know, thing. Uh, but now I've gorged myself senseless in a twice in a three day span and uh, I'm okay with it. I'm good with it. Right. Uh, you know? well, you're just trying to figure out ways to continue the tradition. <laughs> Seriously. You know, is there a Jewish like Thanksgiving somewhere? <laughs> when is Canadian Thanksgiving? Yeah, right. Is there a Newfie Thanksgiving? <laughs> exactly. Oh man. And uh, so, anyways, you would well, think this is the uh, the Thanksgiving sideshow that we you last know, premiered. No, one last little bit before uh, we get off Thanksgiving. Thanks for I, trampling over my sub- uh, segue. Uh, I, 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 uh, <laughs> sorry, but you reminded me with all the talking about uh, about Thanksgiving I, and and my uh, what I love is my Thanksgiving pizzas. Like I kind of told right. you about my turkey pizzas, and I told you I could do it with tofu. To uh, have you give it a shot, but one thing I came across as a problem, I started thinking about the gravy. The gravy is still going to have uh, have a byproduct meat, like a meat in there. Meat, yeah, meat it by, depends. Yeah, meat byproduct. Right. So I got I got to come up with something for that. But I'm still working. They, on no, it. they sell it. Um, now, of all the things I've been grateful for in the past for Thanksgiving, you know, friends, family. Third cliche, uh, not Nick cliche. <laughs> I said third uh-huh. cliche. No one is thankful for Nick cliche, <laughs> um, but I will never be more thankful than the Carnival Personnel Thanksgiving Day sideshow, and I think we all know why. Right, because of um, Jim's tofu turkey, not uh, even whatever close. the hell pizza. Take two. Oh, not what? Close. What, you, what are you referring to? <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that was so bad. It was so great. No. I've never, nothing, nothing my children will do will ever make me as happy as the Paul, I'm not even going to do a Paul in voice because I will never do a Paul in voice again. Ne- I, neither will I. No, that was epic. I mean, neither will Paul, Paul in. That was absolute. I did spend like the entire morning as the rest of the family was getting ready, you know, to go. Like tweeting to every there's there are by the way maybe a dozen fake Paul Lynn accounts. Shockingly, the real Paul Lynn hasn't got the blue check mark to authenticate that it's actually him tweeting. Uh, his people have got to get on that. But there is there's not Paul Lynn. It's you know at not Paul Lynn at fake Paul Lynn at. Fake Paul in three. Are they? Are you in the pocket of Big Paul Lynn? I really because am. you keep plugging I wish all these I awesome was. Twitter accounts. <laughs> oh my goodness! But uh, honestly, uh, that I, I, you know, I'm canceling Thanksgiving from now on because, like I said to Joe, you touched the sun. Yeah, you know. I sh- I should have left in all the parts where I go. Oh my God, that's so bad. Oh, you suck. <laughs> no, well. If that's what you've taken out, yeah, what you left in. It was pure gold. So on behalf of me and every Paul Lynn fan out there, and Bernie Sanders, oh, <laughs> thank you immensely. That was great. Absolutely. And the duet with you, uh, with uh, Paul Lynn and... and uh, me and me. Just break me, the fourth wall. Yeah, yeah, no, it was... Dude, Neil Diamond, yeah. Was great. Oh, th- oh thank you. No, I'm talking the 1% of the editing and the... Uh, 
and the acting. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Let's move on to something something happier, more important. But uh, I know, I know, we've all been saddened by the loss of Della Reese this week, acclaimed uh, actress and, and candy maker, gospel singer. No, oh, she's not <laughs> Reese's Pieces <laughs> candy. No, Reese. We don't know that. You know, no, she ate a lot of them. Sure. Uh, <laughs> hey, she was a tremendous woman, but <laughs> fat shaming. <laughs> no. Copyright Carnival personnel. <laughs> Uh, we'll have no more of that, Jim. Anyways, we. Uh, but I worked with Della Reese for two and a half seasons. Brag, brag. Lucky you. Touched by an angel. Um, Were you? I really was. And you didn't file <laughs> Hashtag <suit>. me too. <laughs> you know, but we, uh, but it's funny. It's like I, I fell a little bad because she passed away this week. Not too bad that I'm not going to tell the stories about how she was kind of, um, kind of a racist and... Uh, Couple of quick examples. You could not send a messenger to her home to drop off a script that wasn't black. Like we we called the messenger service. But how can you read the pages? You know, hey, see what he did there. But no, the the messenger from the messenger service had to be black. And and when we called, it was like an odd request because you had to tell him. It's like she won't accept the script. She won't like you know come to the you know her people won't come to the door and take it. It was like one of those things. Um, but, but, you know, you look at the era she came up in, and that's like, good, kind of good for her. I mean, she had a chance to say, hey, I want to make sure, you know. But she was really, uh, it was, the whole, the, the funny thing about the show is if the core audience who, you know, kind of live in that, um, what's that space between, like, the Northeast and, like, the West Coast, Uselessville, <laughs> you know, love the show. Like, like absolutely, we get pictures all the time of towns that got together every Sunday night to watch at the church. Like, when like you walk people. Oh. in the world, what are the words? But, uh, but, the, but that's my... Uh, <laughs> Touched by an angel. <laughs> Wait, is that the song? Was Gonna that make song? up words. <laughs> 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 like, Wait a minute, I didn't remember it. Well, she sang the theme song. Uh, Della Reese. You know why she sang it? Why? So you wouldn't have to. Oh. <gasps> there you go. But big, bigger news is uh, Justice League. So I, bigger than Della Reese? Nothing I bigger suck. than Della Reese. <laughs> but, it, uh, but it was. I uh, saw Justice League. Um, absolutely loved it. It was everything I was hoping. A lot of people were complaining that um, so much of the great stuff got ruined by the trailers, by putting the great stuff in the trailers. I wouldn't know. I don't fucking watch trailers. So I was able to enjoy each and every shining moment. Highly recommended. Couldn't get enough. I'm actually going back probably... Mm, today or tomorrow. So what's with its awful uh, Metacritic sc- score and Rotten Tomatoes score? I, I I think a lot of people have gotten accustomed to the Marvel movies and, and kind of but Wonder the Woman lightness wasn't a Marvel of that. Movie. But it didn't get as great a score. And, and and the other thing is there's a lot, and I there's just a good dozen podcasts that I know that are Batman podcasts that no matter who the next Batman is, it's not as good as the one before. So there's so many people out there who are 40 plus who think Michael Keaton should still be playing Batman. And then there's people like me who just absolutely love Christian Bale. I think Fleck is great. Um, I also, you know, I, I think it's one of those you know, nerdy, pick it apart things. Same thing. It's like Suicide Squad kind of got panned. It, made it seems close a lot to a billion these, dollars. It, well, you're right. It seems to me that a lot of these DC multi hero movies are really like it started with Batman v Superman and then it just cascaded into all. And, and, well, maybe I could have even started with just the Zack Snyder uh, Superman movies, The Man of Steel, you know. Right. Uh, that sort of kind of bleak looking, dark, brooding not really uplifting at all like that sort of atmosphere but then now it's sort of it's sort of snowballed into like okay now dc is trying to play catch up with marvel let's they have marvel has the avengers let's have the justice league and let's cram all the justice league members as much, much as we can into the movie before the justice league so that we can get people up to speed and then the aquaman and the, but the, who should have had his own movie apparently but didn't and right let's have his him just show up and then you have to know that who's the aquaman like it's well it's, it's kind of a clusterfuck dc dc went the uh straight to video animated TV movie route, like we're going back a little over a decade and excelled and excelled they also went heavy into tv 
uh, and has done incredibly, incredibly well. Right. I mean, um, Jim watches Gotham. Gotham. Yeah, it's great. Gotham. Absolutely great. And and it's one of the there, – there again, just to sidetrack for a second, there's a lot of people who are like, well, that's not the Penguin's origin story. Penguin's fucking awesome in that. He really is. He, he's, he, is he, he is he is awesome. He is a, a – Self-hating, self-loving, self-mother's boy, mama's boy, they all, all wrapped up in, were all wrapped into one His effed up love affair mess. with yes. like Enigma yes, and stuff yes, like that. Yes. But, but people, so they went that way. What Marvel did so methodically, I mean, they had mapped this out 15 plus years ago, very, very slowly. Here is, I'm going to say, strong D-lister. But may, maybe a solid C-lister, but some could argue a D-lister, Iron Man. And we're going to bring him and in, in we're going to spend $100 million. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. at the time is kind of not box office gold. I mean, he, he, he had started his fight back. But by doing some great smaller movies, um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, stuff like that, great movie. And then they bring in Captain America, which again, the first Captain America didn't do great. But we're going to invest all this. Uh, they had, don't forget, they had two failed Hulks. Absolutely, and, and, and one of them, one of the second Hulk, um, I'm, I'm blaming Ed, Ed Norton. Ed Norton wasn't bad, but they had two failed Hulk attempts before they went with you know Iron Man, then Captain America, then Thor. I mean, Hulk hasn't had his own movie yet in the new uh, Marvel expanded universe. So and I, and I don't and think maybe he won't th- and I don't think they need to right and so like I said th- before they put the Avengers together you really knew who Tony Stark was you really knew who all these characters were and of course where they had um, had Nick Fury you know Samuel L Jackson in there they had Coulson weaving through all of them so the supporting cast of each of these movies you know had some consistently too so it was. Five or six movies, maybe four years in, before, five years in, before they gave you the first Avengers. So you knew everybody because it was the second Iron Man movie. I think it was the second Iron Man movie is he introduced the Black Widow. There was a cameo, a small, small cameo of Hawkeye in the first Thor one. You know, just enough to have geeks like me freak out that there's another B-lister in this B-lister. So right now, you're right now, you're just saying that Marvel's writers are better than DC writers. We I'm saying, it. I'm saying, so, but, but you said it. So, so when Superman, Batman vs. Superman comes out, the problem is they took a quintessential, absolutely one of the five most important storylines in DC history, the, uh, the Dark Knight Returns, you know, um, graphic novel. Then they took the most important Superman storyline, the death of Superman, and they merged those two together. And then, oh, fuck. Wonder Woman. Yeah, let's, let's throw Wonder Woman in there. But let's also hint. Doomsday. <laughs> and, and Flash. And, uh, <laughs> right. And it's Aquaman. Like, Maybe. No, I don't know. <laughs> what do you it. want? What do you want? So, I mean, I thought it was two and a half hours of pure movie magic. Right. I'm completely biased with three, you know, DC you're, tattoos. You're, right. You're you're in you've drank the Kool-Aid. I think you're serving the Kool-Aid. I am now. serving the Kool-Aid. Yeah. You know, little, little, little uh, recipe I whipped up from Bill Cosby. You you've graduated from altar boy to full on priest. <laughs> you are full pre- full half Nelson, full Nelson, farther Nelson. <laughs> So yeah, so uh, in conclusion, uh, Justice League sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Justice League was awesome. Yes, right. it's one of those. It's gonna make a billion dollar suck movie, you know. Yeah. But I mean, Wonder Woman two. I'm waiting for that. Yeah, no, it will. It will be great. Um, but but that's my movie. My, that's my spoiler free. You know, I, I liked it. Right. You know, the but only yeah. way to spoil that movie is to see it. <laughs> I'm asking such a dick. Uh, but yes, Aquaman is well deserving of. I don't think you need a Flash one because. And, oh, here's 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 one of the complaints. Management's complaint with the movie. Why aren't you using the Flash from the TV show in this? You know, it's in a completely different universe. <laughs> Do they not want to muddy the way. I don't think they want to muddy the water. Right. Yeah. Right. So separate but, but equal. But she. <laughs> all flashes matter. So she loves that Flash and. 
has invested three seasons into it. Now here's this new one, while that one's still going on. So yeah, I mean, that's just the way it is with right. comic right. book licenses. I, you have a, a, a comic book universe, and you have a cartoon universe. You got a movie universe, a TV universe. So I don't think you need a Flash movie, mm-hmm. but you definitely an Aquaman movie would be great because that's a great storyline. Yeah, and I'm sure management would enjoy that as you well. Know. Um, Yes, because <laughs> it's completely within the realm of the story and plausibility for him to not have a shirt on. You were right. Ever. <laughs> I was just saying that like, she's just like continuing her streak of shirtless hunk movies. <laughs> yeah. You know. Is there a Magic Mike 3 coming out that we don't know about? <laughs> oh, we can only hope. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, what else? Come on. You, you, you're Come on, Jim. Jump on in here. Uh, you know what? I... um. I, I can't contribute much to uh, the Justice Le- League. No, no, we're off the Justice yeah, League. Yeah, I don't remember much about that. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I've been paying, I did a lot of, uh, I got kind of captivated by this week, is the whole um, Alabama Moore Jones race. It, it's um, it's it's getting it's getting crazy. The, the the day the election is what December twelfth, something yep. like that. I, yeah, I think it's like December twelfth. Yeah. Um, I just saw it today before I was leaving the house. To, to you know to record, um, Fox News was uh, flashing. I'm sorry, what, uh, what what was that? Fox on? News. Uh, okay, it's and a, that's it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a station. Could you explain? Uh, but I, I think CNN may have been covering on the same along the same lines. Right, so state-run television was saying what? The state-run television was saying that um, that there's some rumors swirling uh, about um, retirements coming up in the uh, with this with the United States Supreme Court. Uh, and part of you know, first thing I'm thinking is tactically speaking, is what a great time for the uh, for the right to drop that rumor with the election right around the corner, thinking, hey, let's you know, before this guy Jones gets in there, let's let's throw this out there that may spur people who are on that line of do we really want to vote for this guy if these things are true, meaning more, and will it push him over that edge because they're concerned about. Um, you know, uh, another Trump appointee maybe not getting appointed if they lose control of the Senate. Yeah, so, I mean, it all boils down to basics. Like, we want to control the House. We want to control the Senate. We want to control, you know, <laughs> well, we want to get those votes. Flat out, uh, Kellyanne Cuntway, she had said... Uh, when she was asked about the rumors and, and all, you know, why isn't, you know, Bloat is saying anything about Moore's and these a- allegations, and she flat out said, we need his tax vote. That's all, that's, that was the whole comment. We need his vote on taxes. It's like, yep. and again, you're talking, this is the party of family values. And, and the, <clears throat> the apologist coming out saying, and we talked about this last week, the apologist saying, well, Mary was a teenager and Joseph was older, and, 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 but that's the thing. It's like all the either people who are coming out and defending him, you know, or not running away from him. And it's, it's again, it's upsetting when it's, uh, what, 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 what is the term? It's um, there was, party before country type thing. Yeah, and, there's, there's, uh, there was so many different viewpoints on this that, that, that this election has generated, given the concerns of the more – allegations accusations of misconduct be, being true it was it was it was really kind of a lot of interesting reading out there um wh- one thing was you know you always hear you don't want to vote for a third party or you don't want to write in a candidate because of the fact that you're throwing your vote away yeah um but you know people they're they're coming out with the idea of hey listen listen this is a different situation here this is a situation where we're not asking you to back the Democrat. We're not asking you to support the Democrats' viewpoints. We're asking you to look at what this man may have in his history and look at that. And if you really can't get behind what the Democrat stands for, write somebody in. So you're, you're, you're telling both sides, look, we don't agree with this, but we also don't agree with this either. Um, yeah, right. Teach the Republican Party a lesson, essentially, saying, look, you can't just put up any child molester and well, send, well, and the thing is, expect us to vote for him. And, and again, all this is with the idea that if this, if this is all true, but they've obviously – I mean, this has been all over the news. So, it, you know, there's, I'm sure, we, like anything, where there's smoke, there's fire. But it was the first really good argument or the first time – just reading wise, when you think about it, it's like you know what? Maybe there is a point to a writing candidate if people really can't get behind this. Well, it's no, no, because this is why I disagree. It's not a can't get behind it. It's you saw there was there was another senator being chased down the steps who was trying to sneak away from an interview because he saw reporters. And he was being asked about more. And it's a great – the reporter who's chasing him has, like, wingtips on. And they're going down a stairwell. And all the other senator was saying is, like, 
the Democrats will hurt the country. The Democrats, that's, it's like, but what about these, the Democrats will hurt the country. And more, even before these allegations came up, Joe and I, I talked about it on the show before, more, and again, when you have one side saying, oh, don't take a knee in the Constitution and patriotism, more has twice been disbarred, twice, for going against the Supreme Court. The first time it was, he had a statue put up, didn't say erect, a statue put up of the Ten Commandments inside the Supreme Courthouse in Alabama, and the Supreme Court said, you got to take it down. And he wouldn't do it. He got thrown off. He has contempt for the Constitution. Right. He came back, and uh, marriage equality became the law of the land. And he said, not in Alabama. And this is also the guy who opened... Look, it's hard not to say... All of these fuckers are racist when all of these fuckers are racist. When he comes out and he says, the country went to shit in 1965, and you kind of do the math. Wait a minute. What exactly happened? Oh, the Civil Rights Act. You're right. It's just a coincidence. And now this guy, you're overlooking the separation of church and state. You're overlooking he twice got disbarred because he went against what the Constitution is. And now we're going to overlook children fucking. And on the other hand, you say what you want about, you know, oh, we don't like the, the other guy's claim to fame is after 50 years of being stonewalled, he prosecuted the four sons of bitches who blew up the church, killing those children. They, in like, Birmingham. In Birmingham. They, were, they, they knew who these guys were forever. And nobody had the balls to, to bring them to justice. And this guy did. So on one hand, you got this guy 50 years later avenging the death of these four small children. On the other hand, you have the other guy saying, well, I want to date them anyways. They were black, but if they were white... <laughs> and, and again, and it's like the apologist won't stop and the lying won't stop. He comes out and he says like the third or the fourth credible woman who comes up, I've never met this woman. And then she's like, well, here's my yearbook that he signed saying, you know... Yeah, you, it definitely you, appears it's that like, there's a, that where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, there's no no in Shelton rape. <laughs> no, there's no no denying that it is. It's going to be very interesting to see what what happens there. The, one interesting thing that did come up um, it, along that line, just to wrap this up before I, I don't know if we can call this a Trump whistle. The, the more whistle, yeah, 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 yeah. Before we can blow the more whistle, is um, there's a gentleman by the name of Tom Posey who I guess is a longtime KKK leader. And he started a group called the Civilian Military Activist Group in the 80s, mid, late, early 80s. Um, long story short, he um, was part, the, part, one of the missions of the group was that they were looking to over, overthrow a government in Nicaragua at the time. And he got involved in shipping guns and, and later on involved in a lot of uh, um, KKK type activity. Um, and I guess the, the, the Jones campaign, excuse me, is, um, is downplaying this big time. But um, – it is, from what I understand, it, he was very active in his defense and got actually got him off on the uh, got him off on the charges. But you know, there, there's been a lot of questions come out. Who's Tom? About po that. Tom Posey. His name's Tom Posey. He he was. Um, I'm googling this as you're talking. Tom Posey. I got a fact check. Okay. Well, no, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, I, just, I don't even know yeah. who Tom Posey is. But here, so, he, yeah, it's uh, it, it's uh, he's uh, I no, nor did I. It's just long story short, it's somebody that went. So so no no, but finish yep. the story because at the time, yep, you know more was a public defender assigned to this case. And, 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 Meaning, uh, you're and, talking about Moore or... I'm, I'm, about I'm sorry, Jones. Jones. It was assigned. And that's one of those things. It's like, okay, if, you, if you're a doctor and you take the Hippocratic Absolutely. Oath... Absolutely. And, and, and here's a guy who, like, you know, murder your best friend and you're an ER doctor comes in the ER you have to save this guy's Absolutely. life so if you know it's it's actually if obviously this guy hates a KKK and hates racism and he had to defend him to the sure. best of his ability. Yeah, not it, not attacking him on this at all. It's just right. again, it's just something that came up in. Uh, but right, right, but but in, what, what, the, in, what what in, in what I in, in, I'm just in, introducing a new segment called Jim's Fox Only News <laughs> Fox News Only segment because I like the the past couple of stories you brought yeah. up were only Fox, like only available on Fox News or some other right wing site. So I'm looking for like anything that's like Reuters, AP, so like just like something that's credible. You're taking Nothing. All the fake news sources. It's only fake Fox <laughs> News. So this is Jim's Fox News. Yeah, segment. no, you know but, but it's in, I, it, it, it's don't a good know that I. You know what? In fairness, like I said, I think I told you earlier, I I, I erased some things. Right. So I will. I, I will, don't mind like you bringing I will, up. I, I don't will, mind bringing up stories, but I gotta put it out there. It's like okay, if we don't know what's going on, it's probably because. 
it's dubious in nature. But but the thing is, and it's true, people overlook that. It's like one of those things, oh, he defended this person. It's like, he had to. And if he didn't that, yeah. do a good Absolutely. job defending it, Absolutely. then he doesn't love the Constitution. I mean, unfortunately, look, there had to be, there had to be, oh, and there, there was somebody famous. There was just a movie about it, like at the Nuremberg trials. There was there was a the movie just came out a few years ago. Look, those guys had to scumbag, absolute Nazis, you know, running concentration camps still had the right, and it's one of those things that really upset me. It's like you know, on one hand, I you know I'm a big purveyor of freedom of speech. Obviously, we have this fledgling podcast where we can say stuff like this, and we're lucky to be able to. But it also means that. You know, some of the batshit crazy stuff that an Alex Jones says, I have to accept he has a right to say there's a difference between now again, maybe that's a bad exception, like hate speech and stuff like that. But when people throw out that fact, oh, he represented this guy he from the KKK. To represent he right? has to represent him. Everybody, everybody. 100%. Right. 100%. That, good for yeah, him. Right, so was, great. So you're basically saying jo- Doug Jones did his job. He's a good guy. He should be the senator in Alabama. Let's move yeah, on. It's, yeah, it's, just, the, it's a real interesting. It is. By the way, you were talking about us being a fledgling podcast. Now, we might be an even more fledgling podcast now that net neutrality oh, <laughs> is on the bubble. Like, what the fuck is going on? Can you please explain to us what the net neutrality is? Because uh, I'm, a, I'm just an unfrozen caveman. I don't know anything about this. Shut up, are, are you up to speed on this, Jim? No, I was going to tell you. I was just about to say you're going to have to take the lead on this. Okay. What net neutrality means is... The internet is is open to everybody, and that you know our fledgling little podcast that has you know fifty downloads per episode versus a paid sponsored you know something with a million listeners each time they download at the same speed now the only the only difference in the download is what you have available in your community or your house it but the same speed that you download the white house page has to download at the same speed that our our thing for the most for all intents and purposes yes and what they want to do is basically make it a pay as you go so if you're willing to pay a little more and i'm not talking comcast versus verizon Verizon, we're talking you know uh amazon Prime versus eBay, and which one of them is going to willing to pay more, or which one are you willing to pay more to get? It's like do you, if you're here streaming state-run television on your phone here versus wherever, they want to turn it into cable, essentially. Well, basically, it's I guess in the layman, the more layman's terms is like so. If you are a small business or a smaller website. Basically, what you're going to have is that the smaller sites are going to have the two-lane highway, and Amazon's going to have the 16-lane highway because they're forking over the dough to the ISP saying, you know, we're paying for this highway to be exclusively Amazon-oriented. Like, we want as many people to come into our site and faster as possible. So, yeah, it's a, it's a stick-up. And again, it's being dri- It's one of those things where you go door to door and you ask everybody. You ask, you know, your mom, my mom, me, and our small kids who live on the internet. Hey, do you want the internet to continue as it is now, or do you? Well, of course, I don't want it to slow down if my one site or whatever. And it's truly being driven by a handful of of, of the of of Comcast, the Comcast of Verizon, Verizon yeah. AT, like the the mobile giants. You know, the Main Street American <laughs> right, companies. Right. Yeah, the small businessman. This doesn't help anybody. But you eating in the microphone? <laughs> Does that help anybody? Really, it helps a couple thousand people. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, we gotta pay back those donors that. Paid money to Republican stuff, right? Is that what happens? And is, this is why, and if you look it up, I, it's not like let's gang up on Jim because he thinks a little different than us in the voting booth. But it's one of those things where truly it fucks everybody. But the CEOs of the five biggest companies so, fucks everybody. So, I think this is a little lost on Jim, though. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 just so I, so I got you. Just so I make sure I understand what you're telling me is. Is a site that I might like might come to me slower right. than, than right. a site. You, you make knickknacks. You, you make little figurines in your basement, yep. and you're trying to sell them online. Yep. Your page, if I'm if I'm going to like the knickknack shop, you know, um, first shoot me. Secondly, your page might take 
several minutes to just load. It might just load. Remember when dial-up started and, and it would kind of start to load and the text would just come up and not the background gotcha. or vice versa? But on the other hand, it's like, F this, and I click the Amazon button, boom, it pops right up. And a video starts playing telling me how to order because, because Amazon paid for the 16-lane highway. You don't have access to that. You don't – like Amazon can say, oh, okay, we'll give – Comcast, $10 million to make sure that our page loads faster than any other page in the country. What's a small business going to do to compete? And it's it's just like that. It's just like they're slowing you down. And it's... Unfortunately, I think all of this is going to just be glazed over right. by, the, by most people because they take either the internet for granted or they don't care about it, the internet. It, no, it's one of those things I said to you the other day. My parents in two years are going to be like... The internet doesn't work like it used to, and, and be pissed about it. And when I try to explain, remember when you voted? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know, it's like uh-huh. no, but the people. I don't know. You know, but that's what's going to happen. It's like didn't we used to have an election every four years? Right. Why, why are we only having it every ten years now? <laughs> but more importantly, let's go on to a subject. <laughs> I know. I'm guarantee that you're invested in the Lavar Ball Blotus, <laughs> like like purse swinging. Couldn't couldn't. Couldn't be less in- interested. I know they've been going back and back and forth. It it, uh, it doesn't interest. Honestly, it doesn't interest me from from either perspective. But didn't you like Dynasty and Knots Landing? Yeah, I, this I, is you know drama. Yeah, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it's it's not it's it's not the uh, it's not the type of drama I like. It's so it's honestly it's so foolish. Honestly, I, I can't tell you much about it because anytime I see anything, whether I that when I'm reading anything, I see that come up, I just go right pa- past it. Or if it pops up on the TV, I just go right past it. it it's not something I've I've been too 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 involved. In. We I mean, we don't even have to get into, it, but yet again, I mean, it's it's one of those things where everybody's stupid. <laughs> it's not even a truck whistle. A little bit. So we're we're past Thanksgiving. You enjoy your Thanksgiving. Yeah. You enjoy your Thanksgiving? By the way, the viewers can't see you pointing at me. So you Can have... they see me giving you the finger? No. <laughs> Can they see me anal probing? No. Uh, that's for the video podcast. <laughs> but uh, so we officially are in the Christmas season? We yeah. Are. I put my tree up the day after Thanksgiving. That's great. Right. Is, is that always when you do it? Is that like a family um, in the day? No, it's not. It, it hasn't been for a long time. Did you get the big fucking tree? Did you have to go to the forest and cut it down yourself? Yeah. Did you bring a saw? <laughs> So so we are going to do a several Christmas themed sideshows, but let's start just now with just one Christmas special. Not in any order, but it's definitely in my top five. My Christmas special is Scrooged. Yeah, that's the best. Well, no, no. Okay, I'm not going to say that's the best. It's one of the best. Is it on your Mount Rushmore Christmas specials? Absolutely. You, you I mean, you love Bill Murray Scrooged. Yes. Yeah, that's... Yes. Actually, the last couple of Christmases, I'll be honest, I haven't watched it, but yes, I do love yeah, it. Yeah, I have the DVD upstairs. And it's been, actually, it's been many years of me not owning the DVD, me thinking I had it, because right. obviously every American has Scrooged on DVD or Blu ray. Every good one. Right. And where's yours? Did you take a knee on the Christmas <laughs> special? <laughs> I did. But we, uh, well, so, know, who directed it? Who directed, uh, Rich- uh, Richard Donner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean that guy had like a five, six year run where I think he did everything. And of course, who did the music? Uh, who does the music for every great movie? Oh, it's not John Williams. If it's not John oh, Williams, is it Danny Elfman? It's Danny Elfman. Yeah, right, right. And and of course we have. I mean, let's let's go down the cast real go, quick. Yeah, right. You have Bill Murray. You have Bobcat Goldthwait. You have Bobcat's best. Uh, Police uh, Academy one or this? This was a. Close second. He was great. Okay, I'll give you close. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we, are you discounting Shakes the Clown? No. Oh, okay. No. no, no. You heard it here first. <laughs> His no, performance Shakes, in Scrooge right, was better the, than Shakes. The Citizen Kane of alcoholic clown movies. Right. You have uh, 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 Buster Poindexter as, yeah. as the uh, Taxi Christmas driver. Pass. Yeah, he was great. Car- he was hot, hot, hot. Right, Carol Kane. <laughs> who actually, by the way, going back to that real quick, do you know who's supposed to play the Ghost of Christmas Past? No. Sam Kinison. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was on He was on the list, and then I guess the producers looked at his, um, uh, what's it called, drug addictions, <laughs> uh, and said, mm, hard pass. No. But he was like uh, virtually down to the wire as being like, you know, he, uh, here's your script, you show up on Monday, kind of thing. It's, I mean, I put it both on my Ra- Mount Rushmore of Christmas movies, yeah. 
and Bill Murray movies. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a two for her as far as that goes. And it's one of those things where th- this is a completely spoiling review of the show. We don't have to hold anything back. The absolute end song number that, you know, it just, it just, because I Put saw a it. love in your heart. All right. And now just the women. <laughs> All right. The real women. Real women. <laughs> right. right. That, hey, hey, you, you in the back. The guy's been talking throughout the whole film. <laughs> I sir, that fourth wall thing at the end. And of course, and I, I have no shame in admitting I cry each and every time I see it. You know, you got something to say, little man? Yeah, the, the tiny Tim character who was Alfred Woodard's son who couldn't speak throughout the whole movie. He had some trauma growing up and I think he saw his father shot or yeah. something. I don't think it was ever explained, maybe. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, no, it was. That's, that's right, because exactly they went it, to the... What, and, and then when he was telling me when the ghost of Christmas passed, is saying, you know, remember that two years she wore nothing oh, the but present. black? Right, right. <laughs> I like, thought it was a fashion, fashion statement. statement. The SS Minnow. <laughs> I mean... No points this round. And that was his real brother. Oh, really? That was I his, Yeah, I think that was his real brother. Like the youngest, yeah, the like, youngest, the, most least famous Murray? Exactly, right. And also, uh, the the love interest was played by uh, what's her name, Karen. The woman she was in uh, Indiana Jones. She was in Indiana Jones. Uh, she, she, I mean, she and she walked away from acting like as a full time gig yeah. to raise her kid. You know, but she was she was you know huge at yeah. the time and stuff. And of course, don't forget who was Tiny Tim. Uh, Mary Lou Retton. That's right. <laughs> and then Buddy America's Hackett. sweetheart. And Buddy Hackett. <laughs> Buddy, Hackett. <laughs> Buddy Hackett was with Bob Cratchit. Oh, no, he was Scrooge. Scrooge. Uh, did you try Staples? Right. <laughs> There's a thousand movies with the, uh, when they had the little mice and he can't get the antlers uh, yeah. to stick. I'm sorry, sir. I can't get these antlers to stick. Did you try Staples? <laughs> uh, yeah, Would you please, <laughs> for the love of God, stop with the hammering? <laughs> if you can't work late... I can't work late. And if I can't work late, I can't work late. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a great movie. And then, so I think we have 10 minutes left in our podcast. Yeah. We're going to talk about my favorite. Please. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh. I watched it last night. With, with the whole family? Because that's a no. real family. No, Get, it was only around the tree. I actually would have, but I mean, everybody here has seen Christmas Vacation. And I think that is Chevy Chase's final funny movie. Oh, see that that not like his, not saying that was his last movie that he starred in as a oh, comedy. Oh, yeah, I understand. It was his. Last, I understand. Nineteen eighty nine was the last year that Chevy Chase was funny. When, when when Joe and I recently were talking about certain side shows, we're like the best Bill Murray movies, the best these, and and then you know one of us pitched like. When did so and so stop being funny? Like when did these movies stop being good? And I think you're right. I think that's when Cherry Chase said, "Hey, yeah, I'm uh." I'm done. I'm done with it. I'm still cash some paychecks. Right. I'll do Fletch Nine. But like, what about the, I mean, just the, the whole cast. You have Brandy Quaid. Brandy Quaid. Um, Johnny Galecki, a little Johnny Galecki. Is it, wait, is this the second week in a row we mentioned Randy Quaid? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of trying to keep the streak alive. And then how, you know, we'll talk about quick change next week. Th- th- but, they, <laughs> <laughs> but think about that. I mean, he's squatting houses. It's like he was in some huge, real successful movies. He was a legit, legit, you know, A-list B-list character actor for for a decade. Jim, your favorite quote, one of your favorite quotes from uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Can you think of any, one that pops to the top of your head? Like when you when you want to mention that movie in code to somebody, what would you say? The, um, when he, when he wants his boss at the end there, when he wants his boss, he says, "I'll tell you what I want. I want my boss here right now." I like to have my boss, Ralph Shirley, right here. And I want to tell him what a no-good, lying, stinking sack of monkey shit he is. <laughs> Hallelujah! Holy shit! <laughs> Where's the Tylenol? <laughs> One of my favorite scenes is when he's hitting on the woman behind the counter, the sexy woman behind the lingerie counter. Can I help you, sir? Uh, I was just browsing. Browsing. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, is it hot in here? Cool. Well, you're wearing your coat. <laughs> I am? <laughs> I wonder why that's happening. It's because it's cold out. <laughs> I guess there is a little bit nipply outside. <laughs> what? I mean, nippy. What I say, nipple? <laughs> it's the season to be merry. Well, that's my name. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> now, is that, is that on your Mount Rushmore of specials? That's the. Uh, if there were only one Christmas movie to ever that's watch. It. No, I can't say that. We're competing against another classic. It's a Wonderful Life. So, this is a whole sideshow right. that we're I doing know. now. Wait, what is yours? Give, give us. Well, you got kids my, now, yeah. My favorite, favorite Christmas special. That, this is one, or, or special that uh, you like. You, you actually, you know what I loved, and I actually, uh, 
I, I guess you're going to have to YouTube it because I can't imagine you're going to get it any The Paul Lynn way. Thanksgiving the, special? Uh, the California Raisins. Christmas. Yeah, I oh, knew you were going to say that right. <laughs> that right. probably one of Holy them. mackerel. That's what you bring to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, God bless you because yeah. that's not- the Fox News of, Cal- <laughs> of Christmas specials. <laughs> No, that's uh, that's that's clearly one hundred percent my my favorite. I don't know. I don't one th- of my I, one of my favorites. I've I've watched it n- like within the last five years because I would get nostalgic and look for shit like that. Sober, yes. And it's it it doesn't quite hold up. <laughs> it doesn't quite <laughs> have the flavor of the original airing. Could, could you sit down, your seventeen year old, have him watch this and like explain this was a thing? Right. Pe- people decide. Lots of people sat in a room I'll, and said. Let's move forward. I'll with tell this. you this, actually, now that you say it, because I've watched it on YouTube myself. But you know what comes up kind of right with it is that commercial for the uh, for McDonald's with Mac. The oh Knife. yeah, Mac. The, I was going to say the, right same, the right. same thing. Yeah, yeah, right, right. The Mac the Knife. It's like a big moon. Yeah, uh, like piano player. The piano, playing the piano. It's Mac tonight. I'm completely throwing a curveball in here. Where? How can you throw a curveball into this? Where? We're gonna step down from the holiday specials right now. Yes or no, the greatest tweet in history was the Wendy's tweet with the McDonald's um, faux pas. Okay, so to I think only Jack and I know what. No, doing. I've seen it a thousand different people retweet this in the so past. So McDonald's days. on Thanksgiving tweeted something. I think they said Happy Thanksgiving, and then in stars next to it, it said Insert link and video here. Like it was like a something that like the intern who's running Twitter was supposed to like. <laughs> read that direction and then get the link and then put it in the tweet. Instead, he tweeted the direction that was on the script. <laughs> yeah. So then Wendy's tweeted, like quoted that tweet and said, and referenced it and said, their tweets are about as broke as their ice cream machines. <laughs> <laughs> and, but well, it wasn't that great. You make everything sound great. No. It's a Paul Lind holiday special, <laughs> Thanksgiving special. It makes me wonder if it no, really was that because great. Because the great thing is like Joe had sent it to me at one point saying, this is 27 minutes old now. No, no, eight hours eight old. Hours old. <laughs> like, it had been up there, and no, no, none of the Russian bots that follow, like, you know, the pedophile, uh, you know, hamburger wheeling, you know, Ronald decided, hey, somebody should go down to the office and do something about this. Pull the tweet down. I do think he, whatever. That guy was just pissed he had to work on Thanksgiving. That's my well, theory. I, I have a feeling he doesn't have to work on Christmas. I have a feeling he's not working on Monday. <laughs> or she. Could have, you know, equal opportunity. It could have been a, a, a she who fucked that Well, up. we all know that tweeting for McDonald's is an entry-level Twitter job. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. he's moved on to bigger places. But, he's working at D'Angelo's Twitter now. <laughs> but but that was, I mean, so so to recap McDonald's year in the PR world, uh, Burger King paid to, at the end of a screening of It... You know, uh, you know, a, a, a car came up and said, "Clowns are bad. Eat at Burger King," and that that was great. And now this. Yeah. So, so for an vegetarian, you really love fast food. I re- no, I love PR. fast food. You know, giants being brought to their knees. Um, Speaking of uh, awesome sponsors that we wish would sponsor our podcast, unfortunately, we can't get McDonald's or Wendy's. We're just unfrozen podcasters. We don't know how to dig up the good sponsors, so we have to settle for this defunct sponsor of the week. Towers has the right idea in video games. Odyssey 2 complete with Speedway, Spin Out, and Cryptologic game cartridge, and a bonus Munchkin cartridge, all just $199.99. Or Atari with a 27-game combat cartridge, and Asteroids as a bonus, all for just $233. And just in time for Christmas, the E.T. cartridge, just $49.88. Towers has a wide range of Atari, Odyssey, ColecoVision, and Intellivision cartridges, priced from just $14.88. Get the right idea at Towers. We're only 49 minutes in, so... Great. We got only an hour of Patriot Talk. <laughs> Let's sure. get this going! There's nothing in the rule books that says, A, an elephant can't pitch, and B, <laughs> that an elephant... <laughs> I'm taking away the whistle because there is no Patriot whistle. Okay, well, There's right. no limit. <laughs> yeah, you touch the mouth part, <laughs> dummy. There's obviously <laughs> no directions on how to hold a whistle. <laughs> but no, but seriously, we, we can go an hour and a half if we want. I mean, we if can. You got, if you got nothing but time to burn... So... Tom Brady this week proved he is human, that he is, he you know, he's legend, he's awesome, greatest quarterback in history. Are but we playing a recording of an old podcast? At the <laughs> same time, he's a married guy who is happy to be out of the house. And I don't know if you followed this, but he was being interviewed 
Uh, I think it was their last day in Denver. Yeah, there was their last day of practice. And he was asked, because the Patriots went out to Denver. They went out early to get acclimated to, you know, the week before playing the Broncos. And then they stayed at the Air Force Academy for a week prepping. And the Air Force Academy has a little higher elevation than Denver, and but not as much as Mexico, but kind of to get used to it. And so the team had been on the road for like nine or ten days, just the team traveling. And they were all saying how great it is in bonding. And the reporter's asking Brady, it's like, so, you know, has this been a great experience? Is it bringing the team together? They're like, oh, yeah, it helps with this and this. It's kind of nice to get a chance to be away and not be home where you're told everything you do is wrong. And instantly he realized that was wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to have my ass handed to me. And it's one of those things where you can still be the greatest quarterback in the world. At the end of the day, you don't run your house. Nope. The power of the P word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was just great to see like the look on his face because he's always pretty together. He's, well, that's good because Giselle obviously taught him. That's that not, he, taught him well. Need, she didn't need to be there to tell him that what he said was fucking stupid and he shouldn't have said it. He realized that on his own. Yep, no, he grounded himself. You know? Exactly. So, oh, well. Uh, so when we did the preseason breakdown... Um, some of the games that we thought were going to be a problem, we thought the Saints were going to be a problem. We thought that this was going to be the hard stretch, that they were going to be on the road coming out of the bye, playing Denver in Denver, which is a you know house of horror for Brady. And then they were going to have to go on the road to Mexico and with the elevation plus... Mexico, uh, uh, the Raiders have played there last year. It, it's proximity to L.A., which is Raider Nation. It's like, is it going to be a tough Raider environment? The Raiders last year, I think they were like 10-6, and 11-5. And, 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 their, and their quarterback was great, who got hurt the last game of the season. And they were expected, hey, this is a team that could be facing the Patriots in the AFC Conference Championship. Last year had their quarterback knock on down Derek Carr. And this year, they are a real team to watch out for. But, you know, that's so going into the season, everybody thought uh, if they weren't undefeated at this point, one of these two games would be a loss. And as we found out that um, Denver's horrible, and that Oakland is horrible, and it turns out that it's only about six good teams in football, and 25, 24, really, really bad teams. I, I mean, as of last week, going into last week's game, Buffalo was six in the AFC. Like, like Buffalo was five and six going into last week's game. As a playoff team. We're in the upside down, folks. We are in the upside I mean, it, it's so bad, and it's like, and, and here's here's the debate. Yes, the Patriots are great, but is it their greatness or an aptitude that makes them poised to be another 14-2, and 13-3? Because they still have to play Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. That's going to be a tough game. Are saying that the Patriots are a big fish in a small pond? Uh, I'm saying now nah, more a, a big goat on a small farm because, but seriously, they they have six games left, uh, five games left because they crushed Miami yesterday to the tune of thirty-eight to ten. You saw it. We don't even need to tell you the score. What was your favorite part, Jim? Ah, uh, geez, I don't know. Maybe uh, the the three interceptions that Brady threw. No, just uh, kidding. Just kidding. What about uh, when that naked guy ran on the field? That was weird. <laughs> They'll never catch me. <laughs> You're never going to catch me. You're never going to get me. <laughs> greased up naked guy. No, greased up def, deaf guy. Deaf guy. Deaf guy. Oh, who's also naked. Yes. Yes. Uh, but uh, I think he had some underwear on. But you, nope. Nope. He is the greased up naked deaf guy. No, I'm going to challenge you. You challenge I'm going the challenge flag. I saw it on Fox News. <laughs> on the challenge flag. We'll come back to this later. But uh, but seriously, it's it's like you look, and it's one of those things where the Patriots – couldn't right the wrong. Their, their defense, the first six, seven weeks, just didn't look right. And now, in the last six games, they've held opponents under 17 points. In this past, in, in, in uh, the Oakland game, I mean, Oakland scores a touchdown in complete, complete garbage time. So, and then the mistakes that they made. Oh, oh. Greased up deaf guy. Yeah, greased up deaf guy. With <laughs> underwear. Yeah. Not naked. In my mind, he was. <laughs> yeah, right. You see what you want to see, I guess. Uh, yes, I. No, not really. <laughs> you see what you wish you could see. There you have it. Um, 
What else is going on in the niffle? And the football, Jerry Jones has backed down his, I'm going to burn this whole thing down. What about, you're shaking your head. Did you, you follow I, that? I, I did catch that he, uh, he had dropped his, uh, his, his issues or his, I'm sorry, his suit um, regarding uh, Goodell. I, I did catch that, but not much more than that. You know, and I was, I was, I was, you know, from the outside looking in on most things in life, I was looking forward to him taking it the next step. I was looking forward because, you know, Goodell was taking shots across the bow, like, we can take your franchise, you know, and Jerry Jones is going back and forth. But when the, uh, those tapes from four years ago started leaking out, I think somebody said to Jerry, you, you think that's the only off the cuff, inappropriate comment that we have you making in a drunken stupor? That, 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 right. We, we tip, tipped our toe into the water there. So, right, that, that was the first page of Google results. Like, we <laughs> right. even have to go into page two through 10. Right. But that's, uh, that, that's it for, for Pat's talk, I think. Now let's get into what we all came here for. Celtics talk. Oh, wait. And that would be <laughs> oh, yeah? video game review of the week. Random version. Random. So Jacques is going to go get a book. Oh. Jim's going to go get a game. I'm going to go get a drink. And I'm just going to vamp until uh, they come back. Hopefully soon. Wrong shelf. I, I didn't switch them around. How do you... <laughs> the whole book. <laughs> right. I didn't move the furniture around and try to, you know... It's you not know, like Helen, Helen Keller's parents used to punish her. <laughs> yep, see? Rearrange the furniture. All right, so Jim got the game. I got it. All right, it's... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, look at that. It's way over there, huh? I'm going to say... Hmm, it's... Is that not Ikari Warriors? Let's see. Is it G... Uh, I'm going to say Hogan's Alley. You got it. Hey oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, look at that shit right there. Hogan's Alley. This is a light gun game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. One of the few light gun games. You know, everybody knows Duck Hunt because that came with the light gun package. Hogan's Alley was one of the first run of light gun. They didn't really support the light gun that much on the Nintendo Entertainment System. But this was like uh, sort of a firing range. You would uh, go to different um, storefronts. And you would just pan across the sc screen and then it would stop at like a storefront. You'd see the windows... Enemies would pop up, or these cardboard cutouts of enemies would pop up, but you'd have to, like, shoot the bad guys, but not the woman holding the baby or the old guy going, don't shoot. And I'm going to throw in that I think the, even the gangsters that are depicted in here, Nazis. I'm gonna, <laughs> that's how I like to think of them. But, uh, you know, it's, it, but then there's, like, also, like, a, almost like a police training section because, oh, you, you, yeah, there's, like, um, it's kind of like a firing range where... Practice. Yeah, like there's like a practice there where like you, the the cardboard cutouts come by on a rail and then they stop and swivel around and then again you have to like not shoot the cop and shoot the the 1930s gangster. Like it couldn't they couldn't have made it any less offensive. Like obviously you have to shoot the 1930s gangster. Yeah, Although I, I think if they had Nazis in here it would have sold a lot more. <laughs> so Hogan's Alley, um, it's an okay game. Whatever, it's a light gun game and you can't use light guns by the way on modern TVs because of the way the technology works. It like it only works on the old fashioned CRT televisions because the light has to bounce off the glass and then, you know, there's like a timing issue. So yeah. Drop it some knowledge. Drop it on <laughs> right. So oh, so shit. take a look at uh, Oh boy, we got but, but do not turn this page. I will before we get off this section, there's a couple things I want to talk about. On All right. This well page. first I'm gonna guess that he gave the game three stars. And he did. He gave it. Pat Contry gave the game three stars in his Ultimate NES Hand Guidebook. Why am I plugging this every week? I want to oh, know. Oh no, I, I like to see how he broke it down. Oh and yeah, see yeah. The viewer description. Oh, because he's kind of no. His. Oh, okay, because my description is fumbled and his is more. No, articulate. no. <laughs> hey, plus, want, he pays hacks. Did, did he write this one? Uh yes, he did. Okay. This shooting range game consists of three modes. Mode A has three cardboard cutouts representing people that are rolled out and then turned to face the player at the same time. The player must shoot the gangsters on the screen in the allotted time while avoiding the representations of innocent people. Yeah. Pretty much what I said. And, uh, That's what, what the man said. He said that. What do you, what do you think we're going for on eBay? Uh, I'm going to guess $5, Bob. I found it for 6 bucks, or it comes with the gun and Duck Hunt for... 21 bucks. That's not bad. Not a bad deal. <laughs> so, so If I didn't already have three zappers and four <laughs> copies of Duck and Hunt. And two TV. No, one TV down here that works on? Does it work on this it, one? No, it doesn't work on the, the LCD screen. Just, just that one. Just the old-fashioned behemoth Toshiba circa 2004 television. So, uh, so, you know, one of the reasons I like you know going for this book 
book. And I like to see what the quote unquote experts are, you know, but as a, on the same page with this, do you own the home alone game? Uh, I think I do. And if not, why not? Do you, but is there, go up there. Can you look and see? I think I can't see so good. Is there home alone Two lost in New York? I think that's the next one. I, oh, I do. Own is it. it home alone or home alone lost in New York? And there's only one. Home alone. Yeah, there's only one Home Alone game. Oh, is there? Yeah. Because I'm looking at Home Alone that has one and a half stars. Oh, there is a Home Alone. Home Alone 2, Lost in New oh. York, that only had a one star. So even the sequel of the game <laughs> yes. got worse. Uh, but Funny, also, I, and by the way, I saw Home Alone 2 before I saw Home Alone. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> and then, But what's also interesting, on this particular page of gold, do you have the Hollywood Squares? I do. You do? Right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I'm the secret square. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll play that game. Sometime. Oh, but but I I did I I, I like that. So let's move it on. Like one of the last things. Um, last week, you know, um, I watched. We we this is where we do a Netflix pick or what you're watching type thing. You guys talked a lot about wrestling and one of your Thanksgiving traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, Thirty for Thirty, the amazing series that ESPN's doing mm-hmm. for a while. I watched the one on the Nature Boy. Oh, how did you get it? Because you don't even have cable. I do now. Yeah, oh. no, sad. And this is why I didn't want to watch have cable because now all the shit that I get, I'm like, it would have been nice for you to have watched this and broken it down and spent a couple <laughs> minutes bringing me up to speed on it. But no, I watched the hour and a half documentary on it, and it was fucking fascinating. Woo! Yeah, absolutely. I, I have not seen it, but I do. Are you are you a Flair guy? Because that uh, that's not, when you were. Yeah, I'm not a huge Flair guy. I am. Come not on down huge, to the microphone. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I am not a huge Flair guy. I was more of a Hulk Hogan, uh, Barry Windham, Mike Rotundo guy than uh, than a Ric Flair guy. But um, well, was, that makes sense. I was he more was a man of the people. <laughs> <laughs> I was more of a Coco Beware guy. But, oh, there no, you go. The Coco Beware. I just want to throw a Coco Beware <laughs> reference out there. Hey, uh, Ted DiBiase. All his fan does. <laughs> uh, but no, this this Ric Flair thing was absolutely fascinating. It was, and um, long story longer, he was Ric Flair. Like, he became, like, it was a character. And first, when you see what wrestlers do and, like, what he did to train and how it started and stuff like that, truly, they're some of the greatest athletes in the world. They are some of the absolute greatest, most well-conditioned athletes in the world. But his whole thing was a persona. It was an act, obviously. And, you know, he he was a big fan of Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, That's where the woo came from and the cars and the women and all that stuff. And... He got lost in that. And for close to 20 years, he was Ric Flair. And his wife is a huge part of the documentary, right? Yeah, w- w- wives. Plural. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, he I'm, had, I'm out of it. He had a couple of them. Um, well, his current wife is in the documentary. Current but, wife. Oh, but do they also go back to Yeah, the there was first wife and Ooh. stuff like that. Yeah. The, the one who knew him was like, you know, in college, like knew him as, you know, a, the regular guy and, and all this kind of What's stuff. What's his real name? Um, I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> but it, it's not. It's close to Ric Flair, but right. it, you know, Ric Flair is Ric Florino or something. Something like uh, adopted, you know, only child. And but the most fascinating stuff is like it was bookend. The documentary was bookend between two sit down interviews over eighteen months. Like so, they sat down and interviewed him. Put the whole documentary together. Sat down. Like he sat down. This is my life. This is who I am. This is how I got here. Basically, back. Round, not background checked it, but I put the pieces together, did the, and then kind of did another story like on a him. Follow up, yeah, and it was great. And in, in the absolute, I'm really proud of who I am and what I did. And yeah, I fucked a lot of things up on the way. He had a son who, you know, died of an overdose. Who had like basically was trying to be him, and y- you couldn't, <laughs> you know, you you couldn't, you know, you know, be him. Uh, his daughter is now big in the WWE. So oh, right. So and she and I'm not into wrestling, but it was great when they she was like mate champion. Like a, so, this documentary is like a year old to so this maybe two or three year old. She became a cha- and she does the same thing when she gets introduced and comes out. You know, she does the whole woo, you know, type thing. But uh, and it, what I like about this documentary and the other sports documentaries that I really like is when they talk to the Hulk Hogan's and they talk to all the other people who are like who are still alive, who are still alive, and he's like. He was the best. It's like, you know, he knew he was a villain, and he he made me better. And there were so many times when, you know, he took more of a beating 
than he needed to. He went out of his way, and he, he's one of those guys who made everybody around him better. And it's just great when you hear that that from you know not his fans and not his family, guys who have nothing to gain by saying. I'm only here in the Hall of Fame today because of him, and this is exactly what he did. And how highly recommend the Nature Boy uh, documentary. I'm going to kind of piggyback off of the wrestling theme a little bit with the new Netflix documentary, Jim and Andy, which was Jim Carrey recounting the making of Man on the Moon, where he played Andy Kaufman. And they interviewed Jim Carrey. It's basically just a sit-down interview interspersed with not only clips from the movie, but never-before-released behind the scenes footage that he had that the, the studio had sort of commissioned that they never released because throughout the whole filming of the movie Jim Carrey was Andy Kaufman aka Tony Clifton the lounge singer act that was the character that Andy Kaufman played the really obnoxious asshole he was that guy like he was he was an asshole to everybody to everybody on set to everybody around him the Hugh Hefner story that I mentioned. So great. They so great. Did you see the? Did you see? No, the, I just saw it come up on Netflix the other day. There's video of that. Ooh. There's video of that encounter. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't don't worry. Just go to Netflix. Go watch Jim and Andy. Um, it's a it's just eye opening. And I think the reason that they didn't release the behind the scenes stuff on like a DVD bonus footage is, or when it was coming out. As promotional stuff is that the studio didn't want the world to think that Jim Carrey was an asshole. Essentially, it's just like we don't want to, people to be turned off by you. We want people to actually come see has, the movie. Has Jim uh, made a round of calls to like PAs and other people around the set saying, "Hey, just to let you know." No, I don't know if he made amends with anybody, but he did sort of say like that experience drained him for like a good year or two afterwards like he just like had to like get like it was weird to go from being only Andy Kaufman all the fucking time and then when the movie wrapped and they did the promotional tours and all that he had to go back to just like normal life and he didn't he was all fucked up from it and it's just fascinating it does it gets really introspective and it's it's a good it's a good watch i would recommend it jim do you have any netflix like recommendations that the world must know about no, I, uh, I I don't. I don't have anything along the documentaries. Um, I will throw out there, and nobody's going to be interested in this. You guys will not be wowed by this, but Netflix is dropping the second season of The Queen on uh, December eighth, I believe. Is that that RuPaul special? No, no. It's uh, it's about the uh, or about the life of Queen Elizabeth. I I talked to a lot of friends about it. I got a lot of friends to maybe like watch an episode or two. Um, is it a documentary or an, or um, a drama? It's a docudrama. Like it, it's it goes through you know the early years, um, and it goes up there in season two or season two drops. I watched the first season. It was it, I loved the first season. Like I said, I had a, a couple of friends. I try to get them and their significant others to watch it. Watch it, and both most of them didn't didn't make it to a second episode. Is it interesting? Is it slow? I Is thought it... it's slow, but it's very interesting. I found it really, really interesting. And I am going to go completely blank on his name, but um, Winston Churchill was played by. Um, Third Rock from the Sun there. Uh, oh, uh, John Lithgow? John Lith- Lithgow. Oh, wow. Uh, and the, I believe it's episode number nine, which is the, I believe it's ten episodes. The episode number nine was right around the time where um, Winston Churchill pa- passes away. First of all, he did a, an unbelievable... Wait a second. Spoilers. He, Whoa, Winston yeah, Churchill dies. Just Wait. hold on. This is, this is good stuff. Okay. Um, in in episode nine, um, it, it, it's clear. You know, Winston Churchill. He he has a uh, a very long scene where he, he he talks quite a bit about politics and 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 new things coming about in politics and all that stuff. And and, and obviously they were sp- they were speaking to today. Obviously today's time with with Trump and everything else. And they were speaking to today's time. It was probably one of the best scenes and one of the best acting jobs i have seen 
Uh, Better than Harry and the Hendersons? If you don't watch, (laughs) if you don't, almost as good as Harry and the Hendersons. If you don't watch, what was that? Like, that was was like the Sunday night Disney movie. No, that was a a, a, a a show. No, no, no. Harry and the Hendersons was a movie with with John Lithgow, but then it became a series. It became a series. It became a series, but I believe it aired on like Channel 5 or 7. Yeah, right. That was a TV version. He wasn't involved in that, but he was was in the movie version. Okay. That spawned the TV version. Okay, all right. I remember the TV version. Yeah. Only, I I think I saw that in the theaters. Did you see the sequel first? I saw it yeah. <laughs> since two, but I, I'll tell you what. What a like that that one scene was just a, just a powerful performance, man. It, 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 it was impressive. It was impressive. If you watch nothing else, watch episode nine. <laughs> right, zip right uh, to it. Parenting tip: uh, Watch the Queen on Netflix. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, my, mine is, and we talked about at the beginning of the show. Um, take them to the soup kitchen, make them volunteer, make them understand giving back, and make them understand. You could make some wrong life choices and be on the other side of the table. <laughs> so uh, stay in school, kids. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I won't give a parenting tip, but going back to the Netflix stuff, because I don't care about order or con- continuity or congruity <laughs> or anything. Hit me. Uh, Mystery Science Theater, the reboot, has been renewed for a- another season. Uh, I got to watch the first season. Yeah, yeah but I- I'm watching it. I'm thinking, well, how do they eat and all this other science stuff? <laughs> right. No, that was great. Uh we're hoping to do a sideshow this week that focuses in on uh, Christmas time cottage industries. Yes, cottage industries. Yes, I love cottage. not not making cottages, <laughs> not making cottage cheese. Uh, but yeah, we, we're we're going to flip a coin. We're either going to do the war on Christmas, or hey, here are Christmas only industries. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no, it was uh and and um seriously, we will never do anything as good. Or, I'm sorry. This show will never do anything as good or find anything as good on the internet as the Paul Lynn Thanksgiving. That's it. So there's no reason to listen so from no now on. No reason to listen. You can stop. Just just listen to last week's on a constant loop. 26 minute mark, go right into Bam. it. Bam. And then just walk in front of a bus because, you know, <laughs> you peaked. And that's to everybody listening. Uh but more importantly, do not forget <laughs> 